Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. I hope you had a great day. Let's take a look at some new malicious compliance stories, where people conform to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. Thank you for subscribing to the channel and for hitting the like button. If you haven't already, why don't you make this the video that you subscribe to the channel. And please don't forget to hit the like button for the algorithm. And now let's start with the first story, shall we? The first story is called Gluten-Free Bread. Back during my college days, I worked in the on-campus dining hall as a student worker. We got assigned to various positions there for that particular shift. I liked working at the deli corner. I had fun talking to my co-worker and the customers as I made their sandwiches. It was fun. At the deli corner, the dining hall actually had special gluten-free bread and options for those that wanted a sandwich but obviously couldn't have the normal bread options. In this case, I would need to wash my hands very thoroughly and change my gloves before proceeding with the order. This was to protect those that needed to have gluten-free options. Everything was fine and dandy for a very long while. But then a new health craze began to catch on quickly. Gluten-free was healthier. Instead of getting 3 people per shift asking for gluten-free options, I would now get maybe 15 to 20 people per shift. I couldn't ask people about whether they needed gluten-free or if they were doing it because they could. But without fail, whenever someone mentioned that they wanted the gluten-free option, I immediately went to wash my hands. This would take a precious time that they had for their meal, overall about 1-2 to two extra minutes. The people stood there confused for the first couple of times this happened. And they didn't like it. When they realized what was happening, they would make their order and then state they didn't need me to change my gloves, I could just make the sandwich. Upon hearing this, I smiled and informed the person exactly why I needed to wash my hands and change my gloves and then go through with it. I took up even more of their precious time than before. Ultimately, no one ever yelled at me nor got me in trouble. After all, I was following protocol. They would just sigh and look down in defeat and continue with their order. The next story is called, it has to take 15 minutes. A few years ago, I was an electrical apprentice in California. We had one foreman who was a particular kind of picky. If he wanted you to use a push broom to sweep a room, you had to do it in big strokes, not small ones. So one day he comes to me and my journeyman. He goes, I need you to put in T1000s in all these rooms. It should take 15 minutes per light, that's what the box says, so this will keep you busy for the day. We get to put the lights up and find that even I in my first year can install these things in like 7 or 9 minutes. So we knock out like 5 or 6 each in the first hour. The foreman comes by and screams, I told you it should take 15 minutes per light. Well, they were really simple, so we were able to get them knocked out pretty quickly so far. No. I wanted to take 15 minutes per light. No excuses. I promise you, he said that verbatim. So he sums off, my journeyman looks at me and goes, well, back to work then. About 5 minutes later, he finishes his light. I finished mine a few seconds later. He goes, okay, the timer still has 9.5 minutes, so we're just gonna chill for 9.5 minutes. We did this all the way till lunch came rolling around. The superintendent swung by to check on this job site and we are just sitting there talking about sports. The guy comes up looking confused and mad as hell. Why the heck are you sitting around and not working? Well, the foreman told us it should take 15 minutes per light and that we needed to take 15 minutes per light. So we knock out our light, wait for the timer to run out and then start the next one. Oh, what the heck, sorry guys. When you come back from lunch, just knock them out as you would normally. I don't know why he wanted it this way, but I'll fix it. The foreman got chewed out for it and I learned a great lesson in malicious compliance that day. The third story is called, not my problem. I'm a social worker who has been working with the homeless population for well over two and a half years. For the most part, I interact with people who show me high levels of respect. The street goes both ways. About twice a month, I interact with someone who tries to use anger, fear and manipulation to get their needs met. Their harsh tactics used to work with me and I would drop everything I was doing to attend to their rage-filled requests. We just hired this guy who does not do his job. He sits around on his phone and distracts everyone his whole shift. The first week or so he shadowed the housing help desk, which is just a fancy word of saying open office hours for anyone in the shelter. The help desk is a beast. You never know what you're going to walk into. Everyone dreads doing the desk. So the other day I had a client who was needing EMS. I asked him to help me and he said, not my client, not my problem. And then he started mindlessly scrolling through Facebook. At first people respected him because of his credentials. Now everyone in the department sees right through him. 
My boss is starting to throw responsibility at him. He usually responds with, I'm not ready, and my boss responds with something passive-aggressively empowering. I believe in you, you have XYZ experience. So you may be wondering where these two things intersect. Today I was looking for someone on my caseload. I walked by the housing help desk to see if he was hanging around in line. This client stops me and starts taunting me. I see you helping other people and you won't even look at me. You treat me like I'm crap, not a homeless person. You aren't doing anything right now, you're just walking around. I need your help, come on. I respond with strong boundaries and refer him to my coworker. I don't want to break the process, you are in line for the housing help desk, he will help you when it's your turn. After all, it wouldn't be fair to skip the other guy in line. He will meet you soon. And then I pointed at the coworker through the glass. And the coworker shakes his head and gives me the, no, don't do this to me look. I keep referring him to the other worker. By this time, the other guy in line has had enough of his yelling and screaming and leaves. About 5 minutes pass and I'm not budging. It's just escalating this client even further. The client my coworker is meeting with leaves and the seat for the next client opens. I look through the glass and my coworker is frantically looking up and down, pretending to be busy. He is going through the file cabinet that nobody uses, pushing buttons on the copier like he's faxing something and opening stacks of paper and enters it into the paper tray. The client is getting understandably upset. Screw you dude, help me now. What the heck is that guy doing? Have him help me. This shouldn't take this long. I peep my head through the door and ask my coworker if he's ready. He starts and starts, expecting me to bend. I tell the client, I'm not bending the rules for you. You have to meet the case manager at the desk. I have 30 other clients I meet while I'm not running the desk. I open the door. Hey coworker, it seems like this guy really wants to meet with you. I've got to email over something to our boss. Can you help him? I look at him. Not my client, not my problem. Less than 4 hours later, he's already calling places to follow up on his application. The last story is called, call you every time. This takes place in preschool with 3 year olds. At this school, many of the teachers have children attend there. Obviously, because they get a big discount, which isn't a problem. Most of the teachers don't mind their child's teachers reprimanding or redirecting their behavior, as they are teachers themselves. But then there's the entitled admin. She is the annoying admin, who would call in the middle of our lessons to remind us to take pictures of the kids or stupid stuff like that, which we do every single day. She loves to micromanage everyone. I've had several issues with her in the past over these phone calls, as have other teachers. The entitled admin had a son in my class, tiny monster. He was not really a bad kid overall, but when he would act out, yikes. My coworker and I, we work in teams, could easily handle him. However, the entitled admin would constantly tell us to call her when she acts up. Now the thing is, we don't call parents for misbehavior, so why would we call her? None of the other teachers and parents do that. She finally blew up at my coworker and me about it, saying how she never gets prizes and if we just called her, she would behave better. When she left, I looked at my coworker, who looked super annoyed and a plan came to mind. You malicious compliance. Every time the tiny monster would misbehave, I called the front office. Got up during lessons? Called. Talked back? Called. Screamed at us? Called. Told a friend he was stupid? Called. Didn't cover his mouth when sneezing? Called. Anything slightly out of the ordinary, we called up the front desk to let the entitled admin know what was going on. Let me tell you, these phone calls really added up. She would physically come to the room after each call the first day, but pretty soon she started getting annoyed and would just say, thanks for telling me by day two. After three days of calling for little things, another admin came to talk to us about why we were calling so much for one student. We explained entitled admin's request and she laughed at how ridiculous it was to have us do it in the first place. She talked to the entitled admin and explained it was unreasonable to have us call when we don't call other parents. The request to call stopped and we continued on with the school year. And now it's your time to shine. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1, bad, to 10, very good, how would you rate the stories in today's video? I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.